Hello and welcome to another tutorial. In this tutorial, we're going to be making a rock, paper, scissors game in .NET and Windows form. We will be completing this game within a hundred lines of code. So hopefully you guys enjoy this one. Uh, let's take a demonstration of what this app does. Okay, so I try to make it into a um, dark theme sort of Windows form. So it's a bit modern looking. Uh, we have got four labels across the screen, three buttons for the choices that we're making. So if I press on rock, Right, and uh, as soon as I press the button, the computer will make a random choice uh, between rock, paper, scissors, and then obviously you get your player choice. On the side, you have the uh, player result and computer result as well. And it'll tell us whether we have scored or we draw in that round. So if I go and pick another option. So the CPU is still picked rock, I picked paper. So I've got a score. Okay, let's pick scissors. So right now the CPU is still on rock and uh, the CPU has scored one against me. Okay, so now see the CPU scissors and I've picked rock, so I scored one as well. So the game will continue in this manner um, for as long as you want to play and it will show the draw and the score uh, on for both of the CPU and the player. So for this game, let's make a new project in Visual Studio and get started. In this window, click create a new project. For this one, I'm going to pick the .NET Windows form, not the .NET framework. Click next. Let's name this one. Scissors .NET game more ICT. Okay, so rock paper scissors .NET game more ICT. Click next. Uh, the .NET framework five is perfectly fine. Click create. Okay, so here's the blank form. Let's um, go ahead and make some changes to form one here. So if I open up the properties for the text, let's change it to rock, paper, scissors, game, more ICT. And then we also want to change the back color. Yeah, so if I go on to the color, I can actually type in the uh, numbers for the RGB here. So the color that I picked was 64, 64, and 64. Press enter, and it gives you this nice little dark look. Okay, now from the toolbox, let's go ahead and add three buttons here. So I'm just going to make three, make one button first and then uh, change that into three. So I'm just going to make this one, call this one BTN rock. Change the text to rock here. And let's change the font size of bold. Okay, so that's the better to look at so copy and paste that one yeah go to the properties so btn paper and then just change the text here to paper and paste it again and in this case gonna be scissors btn scissors and then in the text to scissors as well. Okay, so with the three buttons now done, let's go ahead and add two picture boxes. Okay, so the two picture boxes can go here. So the picture box size, I'm going to set it to the size is going to be 100 by 100. Okay, and this one is CPU underscore pick. I'll copy and paste that over here. I'm slightly in the middle. And this one here is going to be layer pick all capital. Okay, and now let's go add labels. Okay, because it's a darker background, we need to have the label color set to white. So that way it's easier to read. Also, we're going to change the size to 12 bold, or maybe to semi bold. So I'm using the Sego UI font in Visual Studio. So if you do have the font installed in your computer as well, you should feel free to use that. So this one has an option called semi bold. I want to try and see what that looks like. That looks pretty clean. Okay, so I'm going to. Call this one computer choice. 
Right, so this one is just going to show what the computer chose. So, OBM CPU choice. Okay, copy and paste that over here. This is going to be the player choice. OBM player choice. Change that to player choice. Let's paste it again. So this one's going to be the player result right here. So player result and then LBN player result. And then paste it again. This one's going to be the LBL CPU result. And this is a computer choice. And just say computer result. Okay, so the four labels have been added, two picture boxes and three buttons are added as well. Um, one of the things you might need to do is download the pictures for this game from YCT website. And these are the three pictures that we're gonna be using. So it's all in a um, circle shape and it actually goes quite well with the layout of the game. Okay, so I'm just gonna go ahead and right click on the picture box here. So choose image. So in the project resource file, I'm gonna click import, desktop, rock, paper, scissors, select all three, click okay. And for now, I'm just gonna click none and then click okay on that. Now the reason we did that is that I wanted to just import the pictures into the resources. So if the pictures are imported into the resources, we can use them for any of the picture boxes through the code. So now I'm gonna select all three buttons here. I'm just gonna shift and hold shift. So if I click on one of them first, hold the shift key on the keyboard, click on another, click on another, and I'm able to select each of them, right? And I'll go to the events. I want all three of them to have the exact same event firing when they are clicked. Okay, so inside the click event, I'm just gonna go here and say, um, make choice event okay so basically it's just going to help the player make a choice so whichever um, key is pressed you will either choose rock paper or scissors okay and that's the only event that we need for this game okay so let's do the variables for this game the variables that we're going to need are we're going to need two choices so both of them are going to be strings so we need a string for a player choice and a string for a computer choice we need a string array for options so uh, as you can see here we have r p s and then p s r so uh, the values are repeated twice because having six options from here and then randomizing it and picking one gives us a, a bit more random gameplay rather than having three because if you have only three options the game most of the time will return the same number after that we have the uh, we have the random so we're creating a new random class here which is going to help us create uh, generate a random number between zero and the number of options that we have uh, integer for computer score integer for player score and a string for when the game has drawn for that random let's add a couple of functions and for the first function private string update text and image so this function here is going to run and it will return a string variable back to the program okay uh, if it comes up as red for now that's fine that's because there's no return or anything like that that's been programmed into the function just yet and we'll do that in a minute and then we're also going to need a private void called check game so check game function is basically just going to check whether uh, you won or the cpu won okay let's start with the update text and image function here so what we're going to do is inside of the arguments here we're going to say string then text so we want a text to be passed through and then we also want a picture box called pick as well so depending on which picture box that needs to be changed from there uh, inside of here we'll say string word is equals to null so uh, we're creating an empty string called called word and then we'll do a switch statement here and then we we'll check for the text so depending on what the text is we can do you know um all the following so the things that we're going to pass through in this function is going to be either r s or p for rock paper and scissors and depending on what was passed through then at that point we'll be able to 
um, sort of change the picture and return a word back to the program. Okay, so let's go with case is R. Okay, and then the word is going to be equals to rock. Okay, the image is equals to properties resources dot rock Excel, and then we also break that um, case. Okay, and then we go with the case paper for P. The word is equals to paper. paper image is equals to properties of resources dot paper. Okay, and we also to do a break here. That's not the case for scissors. Word is equals to scissors. Business like so. And lastly, we need to do the break. So we're setting up the word and the image. Okay, now outside the switch statement, we're just going to say return word. So when the switch statement runs, it will set up the word and the image, and then finally it will return the word. So once we put the return word in there, as you can see, the update function, the red line under it has gone because now this is a valid function. And then, so now let's do the make choice event. Uh, before we do that, we just need to tag the buttons uh, with the values that we need for this game. So for the rock, it's going to be R, for the paper, it's going to be P, and for the scissors, it's going to be S. So if you go, go back to the properties, uh, go to the actual properties here and then there's a tag option there so for the rock just gonna press R capital R press enter make sure you don't do any spaces here okay and then just P press enter and then for scissors yes and then click that okay so de uh, determining which one is clicked we're gonna identify them using the tag okay so let's go and make some space here say button M button equals send sender as button. Okay, so whichever uh, button that is actually triggered the event, we need to identify it. And okay, let's call it player choice is equals to do a casting here, string, and then say button dot tag. So uh, whichever button that was pressed, that one's tag is going to be saved in the player choice. Okay. Then we create int i equals to random dot next, and then this is going to be between zero and options dot oh, not opacity, options dot length. Okay, so it's just going to generate a random number between zero and six. Okay, and then the computer choice components computer choice is equals to options. Inside the options array, whichever i that was so if it's a one, it's going to pick the uh, second one, if it's a zero, it's going to pick the first one, and so on. So now let's put in uh, lbl player choice dot text is going to be equals to the inside the course if player is right plus. So now we can run the update function, update text and image function because it returns a string, so we should be able to pass in the player choice and the player picture box. So player choice as the string and player pick as the picture box. Okay. The same thing we're going to do for the computer CPU choice there. Dot text is equals to computer is and then plus update text and image computer choice and then CPU pick. Okay, so uh, this is basically going to update the label alongside with when this function is run, it's going to update the picture box as well. Okay, and then lastly, we'll just run the check game. But we'll run this game for a little bit just to see if everything works, and then we'll come back to the check game function. So just gonna run this one now. Okay, so at the moment, uh, everything seems to be in order. So when I click it, it kind of goes in. Okay, so as you can see, the pictures are slightly out of bounds here. If I press it, it's doing the thing that it needs to do. Okay, these two are not updating. The reason is because the check game function is well is going to update these two. Okay, so but uh, the CPU seems to be randomizing its choices, and then player is responding to the button clicks. Okay, that's great. So let's pick the picture boxes. So if I hold Shift and click on one, if I click on one, hold Shift and click on the other one, 
then I go to the properties. I'm just going to go to size mode instead of normal. I'm just going to say to this one zoom. Yep, so it's not going to stretch the image. It's just going to place it right in the center of it. Okay, that looks better. Okay, so now for the last bit, it's going to be the check game inside of here. I'm going to say if computer choice equals equals player choice, right? The draw is going to be equals two uh, with a little space. Draw. Okay, then we say else if player choice equals equals R and computer choice equals equals B. And then we can actually do like that or signature here. So what we're looking for is if the player chose rock and the computer chose paper, then of course the computer wins. Right. So this this if if statement here is just gonna justify how the computer is gonna win against the player. Okay, and then and after the or we're gonna say player choice equals equals scissor and computer choice equals equals rock. Okay, so the computer wins again on this one. All right, as you can notice, the uh, as soon as I go over the line, it gives a little arrow and then it breaks the line to bottom here because I have word wrap turned on in. Uh, Visual Studio. Uh, this way, you can actually read the tech, uh, read the code better on the screen without me scrolling horizontally on the screen. Okay, and then next, we're going to say uh, choice equals equals paper this time, and computer choice is equals to Caesar. Then, of course, computer wins. So in this case, we're going to say computer score is plus plus. So computer gets one, and then draw is equals to null so there's no text for draw unless it's exactly the same as each other okay now if this one is if the first one is draw second one the computer wins then the third one is definitely where the player actually wins so if none of these conditions are true then that means the player has scored over the cpu in this else statement we're going to say player score plus plus and draw equals to null as well okay so with that done, so with that done, we just need to do update the labels. Okay, so that would be you know, CPU's result. Dot text is equals to. Okay, say computer score is plus computer score plus environment plus draw. If there is a draw, we need to be. Uh, this one is just going to show up. If, if there isn't, this is going to be blank. and then the similar one for the player score okay cool let's run this program now okay so if i pick rock and the cpu picks paper then this, uh, the computer actually scored one i pick paper the computer picked rock i scored one i picked scissor the computer picked rock the computer, the computer scored one as well now i scored again now the computer scored now i scored I scored again now the computer scored as well okay so this game here is done in the most simplistic way i could possibly do it and it's just to show that you can actually make something very simple and fun within a hundred lines of code in visual studio and c sharp so hopefully you guys enjoyed this tutorial and uh, all the resources and the source code is available on the website and i will see you on the next one